Dan Quinn has left Dallas to take the head coaching job in Washington. Quinn was the Cowboys defensive coordinator for the last three seasons. And during that time, the Cowboys defense led the NFL in takeaways and held their opponents to fewer than 20 points per game. Marcus, does the Cowboys defense take a step back with Quinn gone? To Dan's point, I, I believe you, you believe that that is the case. But whoever this new defense coordinator is, he needs to understand where his talent is. And I think it needs to be a pressure football team. Every opportunity that they get. We talked about this defense and how they would use personnel and put little guys on the field to create hell on third downs for offenses. That still needs to be a big mark for this defense. And with a healthy Trayvon and a Stephon Gilmore potentially being able to come back, you got two guys that can play man-to-man -man on the outside. This needs to be a defense that wants to dictate like Dan Quinn wanted to as opposed to sitting back and waiting. Speaking of the Cowboys, Micah Parsons addressed some of the offseason needs for Dallas on his podcast this week. Take a listen. Uh -oh. You know, they're talking about we're going all in this year, man. That's what I would hope for. You know, I'm 24 years old. I've been in this league, you know, three years, and i kind of seen it all. And uh, I hope that we go all in. I hope that we go out and get the players that we're missing because we didn't do that this year. You know, I hope that we challenge ourselves, become better, and become greater for us. We hear you, Micah, right? Before they can make any of those moves, though, the Cowboys might have to address Ooh. Dak Prescott's contract situation. Look at that in green right there, okay? Prescott is entering the final year of his contract, which carries a $59.5 million cap hit. That's One second highest in the NFL. Like the others. <laughs> I know, look at that. Uh, and then, you know, you compare talent level and all that. But Parsons says they need the right guys. So Dak's contract looming over all these decisions. Marcus, where should the focus be on the personnel front in Dallas? Building a spine for this defense in the center. I like oh. Azua. I like him as a, a three technique. They need a physical presence on the interior of this defensive line that can change games. And we talked about the guys, Christian Wilkins, DJ Reader, Matabike is up, Chris Jones is potentially there, Leonard Williams. But to me, this is a DJ Reader or a Christian Wilkins type position that Dallas needs. I love the physicality of Odigazua and his rush ability. And then a linebacker. Devin White in Tampa right now seems to have fallen out of favor with that franchise or whatever is going on there. The one thing I know about him, he's a hell of a football player, and sometimes change of scenery is all that's needed. So when you look at this defense, and as much as we can blame Dan Quinn for what we saw against Green Bay and blame him for these run games that we saw Dallas get taken advantage of, it's hard as hell to play the run in the, in the NFL with no linebacker. It really so is. So really regardless is. of how your play call, and when you go to that play call sheet, you better have somebody to execute it. Don't you think for one second Kyle Hamilton they might make Mike McDonald look a lot better and or he would Roquan say that. Smith, right? Right? So I think there's a there's a lot that needs to be done. So to Micah's point, if you're going all in, these need to be some names that are first on your list and trying to acquire. Is, is Demarcus Lawrence more outside? Like yeah, a more of a defensive okay. man. Yep. Um, Devin White, can he play with smaller defensive tackles? 100%. Yeah? 100%. Because he's always had like a Vita Vey in front Absolutely. of Absolutely. And that's why I deal, because if, if I'm Dallas, I'm revamping, and that's why I said DJ Reader or Christian Wilkins. Those guys in particular. Because yeah. I feel like Odigizua is a three technique that can give you a lot of pass rush. Okay. He just not afforded to, because when teams start running it on you, you ain't, you ain't going to have a chance to get after the quarterback. I, I think over the next couple days, week, when this decision gets made of who's going to be the defensive coordinator, we're going to know about Mike McCarthy's ego. Reality wow. is Mike McCarthy yeah. should get rid of his ego in this situation, call Bill Belichick first, call Mike Vrabel second, and then call Week Martindale third. Mm -hmm. it, it, and would that make potential awkwardness? Absolutely. We, we all know that. Could his job be on the line come the first week of the October? Absolutely. It's going to anyway. So if, if we're really about it, Dallas, if Michael Parsons' words saying, I hope we go all in, if we're really about it, call Bill Belichick, make him tell you no. Then call Mike Vrabel and make him tell you no. And then call Wink Martindale, because you're talking about pressure, yep. and make him tell you no. If yeah, you want to fix mean, your defense, like, coordinator-wise, one of those three guys. Uh, one well, year left want, on the McCarthy deal, which is If you want to keep your job, start from the back of that list, because if you start from the front of that list, you're going to lose your job anyway, because everybody's <laughs> going to realize that the guy you call first is Bill Belichick answering, and work. he says yes, he's going to be like, oh, he better than what we got. But if you don't win, you're getting fired anyway. You the know other, what I'm saying? I think the other thing about this is, let's look at this secondary. You know, Marcus mentioned Stephon Gilmore early on in the show. Like, I think you work to keep Stephon Gilmore. Hell yeah. yeah. I think you realize that Stephon Gilmore became your number one corner. Right, and also you think about the way that this team is built with Donovan Wilson, Malik Hooker, J. Ron Kirsch. Are you going to try to keep that part of your team together or are you going to move away from what Dan Quinn was doing and get bigger with a Devin White yeah. in the middle, add another backer? Also, too, 
I don't feel like this team was very talented offensively. I know everybody points to what the roster looked like, but Brandon Cooks was like Brandon Cooks, and you didn't really use Brandon Cooks like Brandon Cooks. And Michael Gallup was no longer Michael Gallup, so you couldn't do that. And we were going to run the ball, but we don't really have a guy that we can run the ball with every play, which I told you last year, and I don't even work in the front office or a coach, and I knew Tony Potter wasn't supposed to be the one if that's what you wanted to do with offense. Then what so you in church, what I'm offense. saying is – you got to go it's build a, a better team. I don't yeah. care if it's Mike it's McCarthy and or Michael Jackson <laughs> yep. that's coaching. You ain't going to be bad. <laughs> Woo!